Chapter 12. Spilling Tainted Blood. Essen Ford, Sylvania. Winter, 2010. Von Karstein walked down the line of prisoners. He walked slowly, taking the time to examine each of the men facing him. Gans walked two paces behind him. Buoyed up with the bloodlust of victory, he felt like one of them. He felt immortal, eternal. He felt the thrill of victory course through his veins. He felt the vitality of life pulsing through his body. He was alive. For the first time in years, he felt it. He experienced it all as one huge sensory overload. The rain on his face, the tang of blood and dirt as he breathed, the sudden richness and clarity of the colors that made up the world around him, the infinite shades of greens and browns, even the coppery taste of his own blood in his mouth, all of it came together in one exaltation of life. And then, that was when he realized that he had more in common with the cattle von Karstein had lined up for inspection than he did with the vampire count and his hellish minions. He was human. Humanity was weakness. Gans looked at the row of faces, the resistance beaten out of them, the resignation to their fate written harshly in their dulled eyes. They were meat, meat for the beast. You, von Karstein said, these are your men, yes? The man nodded. I will give you a choice, a simple one. Think carefully before you decide. I am not in the habit of letting people change their minds. You spurned my offer of clemency, so your life is forfeit. That is not in doubt. Your choice is this. Serve me in life, or serve me in death. It matters not to me. Either way I own you. Hans Schliffen stiffened physically. You cannot be serious. One of Posner's vampires moved up behind the general, hissing in his ear as he gripped his arms and pinned them behind his back. The count is always serious. Indeed. Guns. Pick a soldier, any soldier, and cut his throat. Show the good general here just how serious I am. Gans walked the line, relishing the look of pure terror in the soldier's eyes, as he paused in front of them, each one silently begging him not to choose them, to move on and take one of their friends instead. He stopped in front of Bauman, because unlike the others, there was no fear in his gaze, only defiance as he stared Gans down. A slow smile spread across Gans's face. He stepped forward and, with one swift twist of the wrist, grabbed a handful of the man's hair and yanked his head back. He brought his other hand up and rammed the dagger he had concealed in it deep into the archer's throat. Bauman gagged, blood burbling through his fingers as he clutched at the wound. It was a surprisingly slow death. No one dared move, least of all guns. He stared with sick fascination as the man he had just stabbed died. Von Karstein held out his hand, palm up, and made a slow lifting gesture. Bauman's body twitched and jerked in response as the newly dead muscles answered to his will. Less than a minute later, Bauman was standing back in his place in the line, his head lolling back slackly on his slashed throat, the life burned out from his eyes. In life... Or in death, General. I am quite serious. You... You can't. Allow me to help you some more, General. You see, I own you all. How I dispose of you is my prerogative. You should have thought about that before you crossed me. You, you, and you, von Karstein said, selecting three of Master's vampires, including Skellen. Choose one of the cattle and feed... The three vampires came forward, looking over the line of prisoners. Few had the strength left in them to even look at them as they walked the length of the line, slowly, adding an edge of menace to the execution by drawing out the selection of their victims. Skellen stopped behind Fisher and leaned in to whisper in his ear, You should have joined me, friend. But it is too late now. Couldn't even face me, could you? Fisher said. They were the last words he ever spoke. Skellen sank his fangs into Fisher's neck 
and fed greedily, sucking the very lifeblood out of him. Fisher's body stiffened, spasmed violently, and then slumped as the life left it. Skellen continued to drain every precious ounce of blood from him, swallowing the thick liquid hungrily. Along the line, the two other vampires fed, then threw the almost empty corpses to the floor. Von Karstein realized the three dead men with an almost negligent flick of the wrist. Their bodies jerked and spasmed as the vampire count manipulated them back into their place in the line. Their movements were a grim parody of life. Now, General, pick one of your men. Schlieffen shook his head. No, I won't. This is... You're a monster. This is barbaric. Do not try my patience, General. Pick a man. If you don't, I will. Schlieffen shook his head crazily, not willing to sacrifice any of his surviving soldiers. Why do you insist in making everything so difficult, General? Von Karstein sighed. Very well. I will choose for you. You, come here. The vampire count singled out a young man, no more than nineteen or twenty years of age. The young man shuffled forward. He sniffed. Snot and tears streamed down his cheeks. It is your lucky day, soldier. I am not going to kill you, but I am going to kill each and every one of your friends here. I want you to run back to the Empire and tell everyone that Vlad von Karstein is coming. Make them understand that I am hungry for blood and that I am tired with living in the darkness and shadows. I want you to tell them what kind of monster I am, how I executed the survivors of your army. I want you to tell them how I fed my pet vampires with your friends, and how, when everyone was dead and the ghouls had sated themselves, I raised each and every one to serve me in death. Do you understand me? The petrified young soldier nodded. Then go, before I change my mind. The young man stumbled away, staggered and started to run. Von Karstein laughed at him as he slipped and fell, pushed himself up, and managed four more steps before he fell again. He turned to Posner. Kill them all. With pleasure, my lord, Posner said. You heard him, men. Feeding time. The vampires descended on the line of prisoners in a feeding frenzy. In the chaos, Hans Schlieffen broke free his guard's grip and dragged the wailing sword from the sheath at von Karstein's side. The blade screamed a warning even as Schlieffen brought it around in a brutal arc. It was all over in a single heartbeat. Posner saw the blow coming and tried to push the Count out of the way, but von Karstein stiffened and snarled at his warrior. That snarl froze on his dead face as Schlieffen's blow clove von Karstein's head clean from his shoulders. The vampire Count's tainted blood sprayed out of the gaping stump. As one, the risen dead fell where they stood. Posner reacted first drawing his twin curved blades free of their sheaths and hurling himself at Schlieffen. The general aimed another wild swing at Posner, but the vampire danced beneath it and rose, snarling, both blades coming together to shear for Schlieffen's arms only inches above the wrists. Screaming in agony, Schlieffen stared as the stumps of his arms pumped out his lifeblood. Bind him and burn him, Posner rasped. I want the man to suffer! Two of Posner's vampires dragged the screaming general through the mud to where a third was lighting a brazier. When the flames leapt to angry life, they forced Schlieffen's bloody arms into them. The stink of burned flesh and the general's shrieks filled the air. The vampires ignored Schlieffen's screams and held his arms in the fire until the stumps were dry and caked with charcoal. The wounds cauterized. Posner came over to where Schlieffen lay curled on the floor cradling the blackened stumps protectively to his chest. You'll wish you were already dead, soldier. The Count might have offered you a merciful quick death. I won't. There was no sign that Schlieffen heard him. Posner turned to the three vampires standing around a brazier, listening to the general's juices spit and crackle in the roaring fire. Four horses! Bind the man to them, arm and foot! and then lash the damned animals until he's been dripped limb from limb. Do it slowly. I want him to know. I want him to feel as he is being pulled apart. It is the least I can do for the Count. He turned his back on the whimpering general. He walked back towards the white pavilions, 
where the rest of his vampires were done feeding on the prisoners. Their thirst for blood slaked the vampires. He smiled to himself. He would take von Karstein's signet ring and use it as a sign of power to validate the transition between one ruler and the next. And then there was the crazy bitch von Karstein had saddled himself with, Isabella. He would take her too. He would make her scream his name. Hermann Postner, Count of the Vampires. The land would hear her screams and quake at his coming. Postner had expected to see that sycophant Gans weeping over von Karstein's body, tearing at his hair and wailing. But Gans was gone. More worryingly, there was no sign of von Karstein's corpse.